Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about songs with disturbing backstories. If something looks a little bit different, it's the fact that the lighting is different. It is summertime, which means it is extremely hot, especially in LA. But I really don't want my ring light burning me to death and I'll just be sweating in the video. Ew, gross. But anyway, how have you guys been? It's been a while since we have a regular video. The last upload was Corazon, which was my second song ever. Shout out to you guys for all the support on that. And I don't know if you guys care, but I also got a new lens for my camera, which means, oh, I could zoom out really far. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Oh, since we're already looking at my amazing t-shirt manufactured by Champion, the summer collection dropped on EarlDoesn'tExist.com. My brand Earl. Make sure you guys visit the website and maybe buy something if you like it. Throughout this video, there will be five codes that will give you 25% off. You just got to look for them. I want to say a big thank you to you guys for helping me make this video. On my community tab, I asked people what songs you guys would like to see in this video. Honestly, it was a lot better than doing research from articles and it was very fun getting the community involved. So thank you guys so much. And I know there's going to be a lot of people asking for other songs, right? I know there's so many songs with disturbing backstories. I obviously can't fit them all, but we can always make part two. So if you guys have any suggestions, leave it down in the comments below. Anyway, glad to be back. Let's get started with the video. Never See Me Again, Kanye West, also known as Kanye's no, Never See Me Again is a song that leaked in October of 2010, which is while he was taking a hiatus out of the United States. Let me fill you in on the context. In 2007, his mother, Donda West, passed away due to heart failure from a botched plastic surgery procedure. This affected Kanye's mental health immensely, as I'm sure it would affect any of us. The next year, in 2008, Kanye and his then fiance of 18 months split. Articles I've read said that ever since Donda's passing, Kanye's mental health was only on its way down. Then the next year, the 2009 VMAs happened, where an intoxicated Kanye West, who was drinking Hennessy, interrupted Taylor Swift's best female music video speech to say that Beyonce had one of the best music videos of all time. Yo, Taylor, I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. And then later that night, Beyonce won music video of the year. Kanye was actually removed from the event and became kind of a villain after all this happened. No one can deny this was a scummy thing to do, especially to a young 20 year old girl who just received an award on national television. Anyway, after all this, Kanye was no longer seen as the musical pioneer he was making himself out to be. Instead, he was known as the guy who interrupted Taylor Swift's speech. The hate was so much so that he moved to Japan for a month to get away from all the media attention. It's like pretty, it's a pretty bugged out story. I like literally left America. I stopped doing music altogether. I just took some time. I went to Japan just so I can get away from paparazzi altogether. And then in November, I moved to Rome and just like lived there. Then this song titled Never See Me Again leaked onto the internet a month before his album My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. According to rumors, this was supposed to be Kanye's last song before officially retiring from music. And some other theories state that this was Kanye's last song before committing the reason people assume this is due to the eerie lyrics. The song is a 9 minute rough draft of Kanye telling us we'll never see him again over a looped piano beat. So I'm going to be reading the lyrics straight from the songs because I don't want to get a copyright claim. I know you guys are going to be really interested to hear all these songs, so I made a YouTube playlist and a Spotify playlist you guys can check out after the video. After. Give me the watch time after the video. Anyway, let me read you guys the lyrics. They want me, hold my head in shame, so I'll hold him on, holding hands in vain. Covers talk and now the feds say I'm insane. A psych said I'm going to fumble down along the planner. And then his son told me, put down the drink, dog. I got the rinks off. Coming for the things off. I guess there's nothing and I'm finna chop its head off. I need a little something to knock the edge off. Aside from this song, life sucks. And I don't like them. And they don't like that. They don't like that. And I don't want that. And it'll be a long time before you ever see me again. Don't worry about me. Worry about you. Worry about something. Don't worry what I do. Hayden motherfuckers. It'll be a long time before you ever see me again. But the connections of go way deeper than that. All credit to Rhythmic Reason for this information, by the way. We're still waiting for Kanye Berg 3, by the way. Just want to make that clear, Rhythmic Reason. I'm calling you out in this video. We're still waiting for Kanye Berg 3. The song's instrumental is either sampled or heavily inspired by a Japanese artist from the 80s named Yukiko Okada. That song being Futari Dake no Ceremony. After rising to fame in the 1980s in Japan, Yukiko Okada sadly took her own life by jumping out of a seven-story building at just 18 years old. The dots are there to connect, but Kanye never outright said any of this, let alone acknowledge the song's existence.
In a Lonely Place by Joy Division. Joy Division was an English rock band formed in Salford in 1976. The group consisted of vocalist Ian Curtis, guitarist slash keyboardist Bernard Sumner, bassist Peter Hook, and drummer Stephen Morris. Curtis had personal problems and health conditions, including a failing marriage, depression, and epilepsy. As the band's popularity grew, Curtis's condition made it extremely difficult for him to perform. He occasionally experienced seizures on stage. He sadly ended up committing during the band's first U.S. and Canada tour. That happened on May 18, 1980, at just 23 years old. The band continued under the name New Order, though the last song Ian Curtis sang on with Joy Division was released. In a Lonely Place, the song was recorded four days before he took his own life. The whole song has such a scary vibe to it. It sounds like it was recorded in an empty cathedral with a muffled mic. Not only is the instrumental disturbing, but the lyrics are what really sealed the deal when you know what Ian did just after this song. There are only three short verses, so I'll read them to you now. Caressing the marble and stone, love that was special for one, the waste and the fever I heat, how I wish you were here with me now, body that curls and hides, hardships that often belie, warm like a dog round your feet, how I wish you were here with me now, hangman looks round as he waits, cord stretches tight then it breaks, someday we will die in your dreams, how I wish we were here with you now. Dark Place by Juice World. Platinum recording artist Juice World, who sadly passed away on December 8th, 2019, due to an overdose, was and still is known for his melodic emo raps, rapping about drugs, sex, relationships, and death. Making songs about drug use isn't anything unique in the rap scene. It's something people don't even turn their heads to anymore. It's just, oh, Yep, part of the song. Since we're already used to hearing people talk about popping pills or drinking lean. Both Juice's girlfriend and mother have explained that Juice was suffering from depression, with his mother even stating, Jared and I often had frank discussions about his struggles with addiction, anxiety, and depression. I think he felt comfortable being honest with me because I never judged him. I recognized that what Jared was dealing with was a disease, and I know he truly wanted to be free from the demons that tormented him. As a parent, I believed early on and supported Jared having access to counseling. I encouraged him to always share his feelings. My message to the parents and children is simple. You do not have to suffer alone. You do not have to be ashamed of your mental health struggles. There is help. There is a way out. Though one unreleased Juice World song really hits different once you realize the cause of his death. That song is Dark Place. The song begins with beautiful chords and Juice begins softly rapping about being lost in well, a dark place. The entire song is a transparent look at just exactly how Juice was feeling at the time. I really suggest listening to this song just to get a full grasp of its authenticity because me reading the lyrics just won't do it justice. Lost in a dark place, trapped in the crawl space. In my mind, I get lost, then I wake up in a coffin. They tell me they care, they're just in love with the music, so they'll never know about the pain I go through. It's like a chain of reactions, all these demon attacks, from all the drugs that I'm taking to the women distracting me. From being myself, it's like I'm losing my traction. Kiss death on the lips, I have a fatal attraction. This is my heart. Watch as my problems inspire me, tear me apart. Won't let the demons take over me. They took it too far, now I need some surgery. I'm falling apart, it's like I'm lost in the motions. Use this song as a rope to wrap around the commotion tie the knot at my throat. I look at death as a notion. I don't want it no more, but it's too late to reverse it as I fall on the floor. Polly by Nirvana. Polly is a song that is disguised really well as not having a darker meaning, when in reality it's extremely morbid. To be specific, it's about the rape of a 14-year-old girl written in the perspective of the it's based on a true story that happened in June of 1987. A man by the name of Gerald Friend abducted a girl at knife point after she accepted a ride after a rock concert. She was repeatedly raped and tortured while being strapped to a pulley suspended from the ceiling. The torture included burning her with a blowtorch. Eventually, he was arrested and given two 75-year sentences. The song being named Polly is a play on words on the Polly Wanna Cracker saying, not to be confused with the Polly class case. That happened years later. The victim's actual name was never released. Polly wants a cracker. Like I was saying, this is a play on words because this phrase is commonly used when feeding parrots. In this context though, it's being used to train the girl to do what he wants. I think I should get off her first. The narrator is explaining that he should probably physically get off of her first and then feed her so she won't starve to death, which will probably make her more compliant to do what he says out of fear of her own life. I think she wants some water to put out the blowtorch. This one is pretty self-explanatory given the context with the torture method of the blowtorch. Isn't me, have a seed. Let me clip dirty wings. Let me take a ride cut yourself. Want some help? Please myself. Got some rope? Haven't told. Promise you? Have been true. Let me take a ride? Cut yourself. Want some help? Please myself.
If you're enjoying the video, it would mean a lot if you guys could leave a like. Also, if you haven't subscribed, it would be awesome if you could subscribe. I upload a bunch of morbid videos that I'm sure you would love to binge. I also have a Patreon where I upload all my videos first. And please make sure to subscribe to my second channel, Birdie, because I'm going to be starting a podcast there. Yes, a visual podcast with my best friends, and it would be awesome if you guys could be already subscribed by the time it comes out. Anyway, back to the video. Jeremy by Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam is an American rock band formed in Seattle, Washington in 1990. The band's lineup consists of founding members Jeff Ament, Stone Gossard, Mike McCready, and Eddie Vedder, as well as Matt Cameron who joined in 1998. Jeremy is their sixth track on their first studio album released in 1991. This is another one of those songs where it's just so good you don't even pay attention to the lyrics. The blazing guitar, beautiful singing, and hard-hitting drums. Eddie Vedder could have been singing about slipping on bananas and I'm pretty sure no one would have noticed due to its incredible vocal range. Anyway, the song was inspired by two stories. The first being about a 16 year old boy named Jeremy Wade Dell from Richardson, Texas, who shot himself in front of his classmates on the Tuesday morning of January 8th, 1991. Eddie Vedder explained the inspiration in a 2009 interview, stating, It came from a small paragraph in a paper, which means you kill yourself and you make a big old sacrifice and try to get your revenge. That all you're going to end up with is a paragraph in a newspaper, 63 degrees and cloudy in a suburban neighborhood. That's the beginning of the video, and that's the same thing in the end. It does nothing, nothing changes. The world goes on, and you're gone. The best revenge is to live on and prove yourself, be stronger than those people, and then you can come back. The other story that inspired their song was about a student that Eddie personally knew in middle school. In a 1991 interview, he stated, I actually knew somebody in junior high school in San Diego, California that did the same thing, just about. Didn't take his life, but ended up shooting up an oceanography room. I remember being in the halls and hearing it, and I had actually had altercations with this kid in the past. I was kind of a rebellious fifth grader, and I think we got in fights and stuff. So it's a bit about a kid named Jeremy, and it's also a bit about a kid named Brian that I knew, and I don't know. The song, I think it says a lot. I think it goes somewhere. And a lot of people interpret it in different ways and it's just been recently that I've been talking about the true meaning behind it and I hope no one's offended and believe me. I think of Jeremy when I sing it. So, here are some of those lyrics. Daddy didn't give attention. Oh, to the fact that mommy didn't care. King Jeremy the wicked. Oh, ruled his world. Jeremy spoke in class today. Jeremy spoke in class today. Clearly, I remember picking on the boy. Seemed a harmless little fuck. Oh, but we unleashed a lion. Gnashed his teeth and bit the rhesus lady's breast. How could I forget? And he hit me with a surprise left. My jaw left hurting. Oh, dropped wide open. Just like the day? Oh, like the day I heard. Evil by Interpol. This is a very interesting one on the list. So Interpol is a rock band from Manhattan, New York, and in 2004 they released their second studio album Antics, which actually peaked at number 15 on the Billboard 200 charts. Their track Evil was released as their second single from the album before its release, and that song peaked at number 24 on Billboard 100. The music video has nothing to do with the lyrics, at least from what I could tell. It follows a puppet named Norman who survived a car crash and it seems like another woman involved didn't. People are crying, most likely family members, and the rest of the music video follows this puppet on his way to the hospital. They make his pupils dilate, which is pretty cool, but kind of creepy. Fun fact, Interpol actually created a real-life GoFundMe for the puppet Norman, and that ended up raising $1,434, though it seems that project was abandoned. Anyway, let's get on to the lyrics now. These lyrics are written from the perspective of Fred West, who is speaking to his wife, Rosemary West. The West couple were an English murderous duo who killed at least 12 people between 1967 and 1987, all the victims being young women, and at least eight of those girls were beaten and the victim's dismembered bodies were buried in the cellar or garden of the West residence. The couple was charged in 1994 and Fred committed in his cell while Rose was convicted of 10 murders and sentenced to 10 life sentences. It's actually so interesting because you would never think about that when listening to the song. Again, I really encourage you guys to go ahead and just go listen to these songs, give them a chance. Playlists are linked down below after the video. A lot of these are actually in my playlist now. This, this, this is a good example. This, this song is fucking amazing. Rosemary, heaven restores you in life. You're coming with me. Through the aging, the fearing, the strife, it's the smiling on the package. It's the faces in the sand. It's the thought that moves you upwards, embracing me with two hands. Right will take you places. Yeah, maybe to the beach. When your friends, they do come crying. Tell them now, your pleasure's set upon slow release. Leave some shards under the belly. Lay some grease inside my hand. It's a sentimental jury and the makings of a good plan. You've come to love me lightly. Yeah. You come to hold me tight. Is this motion everlasting or do shudders pass the night? Rosemary. Oh, heaven restores you in life. Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique. This one will send chills down your spine. I sound like a clickbait YouTuber. This one's gonna send chills down your spine, but I'm serious. 
This is possibly one of the worst songs I've ever heard. I'm gonna try to explain it as monetizable as I can. Released in 2001, Dance with the Devil tells a story of a young man who wants to prove to himself and his friends that he's a gangster. He wants to do it so bad that he'll do anything to prove to them that he's just like them. So this one is more self-explanatory in the lyrics, so I don't really have to explain the lyrics, but um, I'll just go over the main parts of the song. I once knew a gentleman whose real name was William. His primary concern was making a million, being the illest hustler that the world ever seen. He used to fuck movie stars and sniff coke in his dreams. A corrupted young mind at the age of 13. Skipping other lyrics, I'll just explain it really quick. This young man named William is trying to be a gangster. He's ignoring his single mom that works really hard late at night just to make money for the both of them. And he goes out and focuses on robbing, fighting, and slinging guns. So Billy started robbing gentlemen, anything he could do, to get his respect back in the eyes of his crew. Started fights over little shit up on the block. Stepped up to selling mothers and brothers the crack rock. Eventually, he is put to the test by his homies. But only a real thug can stab someone until they die, standing in front of them, staring straight into their eyes. Billy realized that these men were well guarded, and they wanted to test them before business started. Suggested in a bitch to prove he was cold hearted. So now he had a choice between going back to his life or making money with made men in the scythe. His dreams about cars and ice made him agree. A hardcore gentleman is all he ever wanted to be. So he met them Friday at a quarter to three. Look, man, the story gets gruesome, and I don't even know if I could say it on YouTube. Well, the entire song is on YouTube, so I'm pretty sure I could. But I'll skip to the part where he's done the girl and he's about to get rid of her you know what i mean right he's about to get rid of her right before he pulled the trigger and ended her life he thought about the cocaine with platinum and ice and he felt strong standing along with his new brothers cocked the gat to her head and pulled back the shirt cover but what he saw made him start to cringe and stutter because he was staring into the eyes of his own mother yeah what the fuck, bro? She looked back at him and cried because he had forsaken her. She cried more painfully than when they were raping her. His whole world stopped. He couldn't even contemplate. His corruption had successfully changed his fate. And he remembered how his mom used to come home late, working hard for nothing, because now what was he worth? He turned away from the woman that had once given him birth and crying out to the sky because he was alone and scared. But only the devil responded because God wasn't there. Yeah, this song is so hardcore. You know what the craziest part is? That it's inspired by true events. So I was actually looking up if it was a true story or not because at the end of the song Immortal Technique that he was part of the group But basically to answer it from this interview I've seen Immortal Technique states that Dance with the Devil is a true story Which is already crazy that he claims this is true but he says that he made himself a part of it for the song He says this is true. That's fucking horrible. This is definitely one of the more hardcore songs on this list Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you guys want to see a part two to this, because I would love to make a part two with your guys' suggestions, um, leave them down in the comments. I just go through the comments and check them out. You don't even have to have likes in your comment. I just check them out, go check out the songs. But uh, if we make a part two, of course, it'll be a few videos down the road. I'm not going to spam upload these. I hope you guys like this video as much as I love researching it. And make sure to buy at EarlDoesn'tExist.com and go stream Corazon, my new song. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time I upload.